You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. I am back, Rodrance, for Black and White Sports 2, where we're going to talk about Amazon Prime. David Tepper, of course, the owner of the Carolina Panthers. When I was looking into this, just kind of doing a little research on the side, um, he bought that Panthers franchise for $2.275 billion with a B. Um, that, you know, that actually seems like a bargain all of a sudden for an NFL franchise. But I saw where the value of the franchise, the Panthers, has increased 58% since he just bought it in 2018. Wow. So if you got the money, if you got three or four or five extra billion dollars laying around, buy, your, buy yourself an NFL franchise, and it will increase in value very quickly. Uh, one has got to wonder, what is going to actually burst the NFL's bubble, the growth bubble, right? Uh, because, uh, you know, the NFL has done some things recently over the last, okay, social justice BS aside. Let's just push the politics aside. Let's talk just football. They've done some things that fans are not loving, all right? There's already a sentiment out there uh, among what I would say is upward of 10, 12, 15% of fans that actually believe the league is rigged are scripted in some way, okay? Or at least the NFL heavily favors certain outcomes, right? In other words, in the NFL's mind, they would love to figure out how to obviously get Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs in the Super Bowl against the Dallas Cowboys. That would be the ultimate ratings bonanza, right? Or Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets, whenever that happens, in the Super Bowl against the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, the ratings on that, it would probably be a record-setting uh, Super Bowl, right? Um, now, I don't know, but a lot of people got very curious when the DeMar Hamlin situation happened, and all of this, all of this stuff started happening, like neutral field AFC championship game proposals, and it was like, wait a minute, what's going on now? Why is this happening? And it was because the NFL wanted to use that excuse as an excuse to trial run neutral site championship games, which is what the NFL really wants. Okay, They want neutral site NF uh, NFC and AFC championship games. Now, the other thing that's got fans really pissed is Amazon Prime having Thursday night football. Uh, a lot of fans just can't even believe the NFL entered into this deal. Because in some kind of way, let's be real, it feels a little bit, a little bit like pay-per-view NFL game, does it not? I mean, you have to have an, uh, an Amazon Prime membership to watch that NFL game. Now, I know a lot of people's just got one. I've got one, okay? I order, I order my, my solar panels and all my stuff out of there, right? Um you might be like, you're you're doing solar roads? Yeah, well, look, I'm doing it because I want to cut down on utility bills. And I want a backup for my office, right? Power goes out, boom, solar kicks in. I keep on trucking. I keep on making that bread. So anyway, that's neither here nor there, but the NFL got greedy, and they took the Amazon Prime thing. But the problem is they oversold the package. Hey, it's going to draw, I think it was like $12.5 million or something is what the NFL wanted. And uh, we covered this Amazon Prime fiasco because there's been a lot of things involving that that's been a mess. Quality has been a mess, like as in buffering and video issues. I've got really damn fast internet, let me tell you. I still had, I still had video uh, issues. I did. Um, and, and I've got like, two, you know, 130, 40, 50, 60 down sometimes. And... Everything else that I stream, by the way, that's really fast for being out in the country, but uh, everything else I stream is perfect. No problems. Can do 4K. No problems. Audio, not good on Amazon Prime. I've had issues with that. John has got like one gig down. 
he's had video and audio problems. All right? So a lot of things has been a problem. Well, guess what? Um, they're wanting to flex games for Thursday night football, right? And some of the owners voted no, and we we have found out what uh, exactly who those owners are, what teams said no, and what teams are on the fence. We knew the Panthers and the Broncos were on the fence, but guess what? David Tepper asked the NFL a question and did not get an answer. Did not get an a, 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 a not only did they not get a a a lie or a truthful answer, they refused to answer a billionaire. I think he's maybe the maybe the third richest owner out of all of them. I mean, look that 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 Broncos Walmart ownership is going to take the cake right now, right? And if Bezos comes in and actually does get the commanders, he's going to take the cake too there, right? But Tepper is very well off, okay? He's like Jerry Jones, kind of. As an individual, he's got a lot of money. He's a lot, got a lot of money, but evidently he is not pulling as much weight as he would hope. This is Florio. Let's just check this out. The commissioner needs only two more yes votes to deliver Thursday night flexing. By the way, the league is taking a beating from fans over this. He may need to flex every muscle he has to get there. With 22 in favor of it, eight opposed, two abstained, the teams who opted to take a no position were uh, actually eight of the teams that, that, that took a no uh, four were per king. The Giants, Jets, Bears, Packers. It says teams who opted to take no position. In other words, they were in the middle. They abstained from the bo- vote. Panthers, Broncos, and of the eight teams that actually voted no, Giants, Jets, Bears, Packers. Okay? So the discussion reportedly got interesting. Ben Fisher of Sports Business Journal The debate among owners was, quote, spirited. In other words, spirited is a really colorful, sweet way of saying they went to war inside of a room. Okay, let's just be real. These these billionaires, they got a little infighting going on. But I found this very interesting. Panthers owner David Tepper, via Fisher, asked league executives, Quote, is this a direct response to something Amazon said? Tepper did not get a direct answer. Wow. Okay. So what they're saying is, if he didn't get a direct answer, Amazon is pissed over ratings. Okay. They're mad over their ratings. And that's what's led to, let's flex. Okay. And and what happens is, when you flex a game, all right, uh, I'm going to, I took a vacation to New York. I planned it in advance. I'm going to New York. I want to see Aaron Rodgers and the Jets play. I've got it all planned out. I got it planned out for three months. Got my tickets, blah, blah, blah. They were insane for the price. I find out however many days beforehand, as I'm just coming up to the event, that it's no longer going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern time on a Sunday. It's been flexed into Thursday night. I'm effed. All right? I'm effed. And look, at least four teams understand that. Giants, Jets, Bears, Packers. I know John Merritt just came right out and said, you're screwing the fans. All right? And it's going to be things like this. It's eventually going to piss fans off. And it'll it'll be things like this that actually puts a chink in the NFL's armor. Of course, Amazon wants it. More broadly, the league wants it because... Streaming is the future. The league knows viewer habits must change in order to get viewers who watch on TV to watch via streaming services. You know what's funny about this bullshit, though? You know, they moved the XFL back to network television, all right? I haven't done that ratings video, but I'll just let you know. They moved it back to ABC, which is free over-the-air antenna. The ratings went up by, like, 650,000 viewers. So the fact is, they could have just as easily gave the package to NBC or to Fox or to Disney and ABC 
and had it on network television and kept drawing 20 million viewers. Oh no, the NFL's got to outthink the room. There are people right now that have decided to cut the cord and cut the cord and their streaming crap. Okay, like that's starting to become a thing where people are canceling Netflix, Amazon, ESPN Plus, Hulu, because they're tired of paying even that. There is movement back in the direction of OTA free television. That's a thing. And of course, Amazon, I'm sure, is somewhat nervous about that. The numbers for Amazon's first foray, an average audience of 9.6 million, weren't good enough. The league needs to do something to beef things up to elevate the floor, to push the number back towards 20 million or so who watch Thursday night games on Fox. But flexing, in our view, isn't the answer. As Giants co-owner John Maris said, it's, quote, abusive to the paying customer. It's also abusive to the players, even though the league believes it can hang its hat on the cherry-picked notion that the raw numbers of injury are no different between normal rest and games, short week games. It will be interesting for several weeks as Goodell and company try to get two of the last 10 holdouts to a yes. Mara and others could be trying to get some yes votes to change their mind. It could stay, quote, spirited. It could get ugly. Feelings could get hurt. Egos could get bruised. Hopefully in the end, the right thing for the fans and the players in the game will be done. And maybe that's what will happen, really, with Mara calling the plan, quote, abusive. How can they proceed with it? You know, and that's that's the thing. Now, you got this first comment on here. NFL on Prime is unwatchable. Terrible ideas spawn purely from greed. Fans that plan travel well in advance to make one of these games could find themselves completely hosed out of an opportunity. You know, uh, somebody said their team is on the right side of this. The NFL is going to kill the good that lays the golden egg. Greed is not always good. So, um, and, and, and I think he actually said, greed is not always good. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the point is, that's just a little fan feedback from PFT. But you get the point, right? Mark Cuban said, the NFL better watch what they're doing. Eventually, they could fall from the hilltop. Now, do I think these other leagues will ever catch the NFL? No. But the NFL could fall back because fans could get tired of their shit. Nobody wants to see AFC, NFC neutral site games. Okay? Flexing. Well, look, let's say players don't get hurt more. What about players that would have played on Sunday but now cannot play because their injury is not going to be healed enough to be ready by Thursday night? That's the thing a lot of us is not brought up in all this is some of your best players may have been able to make Sunday, but they can't make Thursday. Think about that. You know, that's a thing, too. So I guess, actually, technically, if they were scheduled to play on Sunday, they would move them back a couple of days or something like that. I don't know if it's moved forward or moved back, but whatever it is, it's not good because you foobar your 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 fans' traveling plans. That was the whole basis of moving the Raiders to Vegas was Vegas is a destination uh, vacation city. Because I can tell you right now, if I was planning to go to Vegas, I'm going to do it during the football season so I can go by and watch the Raiders and Jimmy Garoppolo play football. All right? I'm gonna. That's going to be, as a Niners fan, I'm going to go by, I'm going to catch a Raiders game while I'm there and watch Jimmy G play. Why not? Right, They may get the doors blown off of them, but that stadium is gorgeous, and I want to see it in person. But if you fuck around move the game, I'm screwed. So you sort of shoot yourself in the, in the head doing that. Tell me what you think, Black and White Sports 2 supporters. Peace, I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.